Welcome guys, welcome to this new video. So in this uh, video we will go through two questions from the May 19 time zone 2 paper 3. One of them is about this ladder and the other one is going to be about a rolling ball down a hill. So this first question tells us that we have a uniform ladder of weight 50 newtons, a length of 4 meters placed against a frictionless wall making an angle of 60 degrees and we need to outline why the normal force acting on the ladder at the point of contact with the wall is the same is equal to the frictional force between the ladder and the ground so over here so first of all let's discuss in what way these two forces are acting on on this uh, ladder so we know that frictional force always acts in a direction opposite to the direction of motion. So if we kind of try and imagine how this situation is happening, this ladder would want to slide like this. Like it wants to slide down the wall. So this end would try and move this way. So if it would start sliding, this end point of the ladder would have a velocity to the left. But our frictional force is trying to prevent that. So it must be a force acting in the opposite direction to this um, sliding velocity so it will be acting to the right whereas the normal force we know is always well it's called a normal force because it's always 90 degrees to the surface and well it only makes sense if it's this way it's just like we would have a regular case of like a block sitting on some table the normal force would be pointing upwards like this now it's just rotated by 90 degrees it is the same situation and then we also have the weight of 50 newtons we are told that it's a uniform ladder so that means the weight is distributed equally so we can model the weight as the ladder as a force acting down the middle of the ladder so this is the weight and so it's in such a way that this is two meters and this is also two meters as the we can assume that the weights weight acts in the middle so this first question wants us to outline why this frictional force and this normal force must be equal and well the reason they must be equal is because we have equilibrium here. More specifically, we have translational equilibrium. And what this means is that the sum of the forces, so sum of forces in the x direction must be zero. And the reason they must be zero is that the ladder is not moving in the x direction at the moment. It's just stationary placed against the wall. So if, if these two forces would not be equal, then that would mean that we have some net force acting in this horizontal, horizontal direction. So the ladder would move to the left or to the right, but that's not happening here. So it must be zero because a ladder is in equilibrium or ladder is stationary. All right, and then we need to calculate this frictional force. So, well, this is a rigid body mechanics question. So here we have to use torques, as we also have here a uh, an equilibrium in terms of torque, a rotational equilibrium. So the if we take a point anywhere on this diagram and we calculate the torque on that point, it should be uh, zero. So, I mean, here we can usually take any point. So any point we like. But usually it's smart to choose such a point through which as many forces pass through as possible because we know that if we pick this point, for example, then the frictional force will have no torque about this axis of rotation. So if we assume this is the axis of rotation, since the force, the, the, the line of action of the force passes through the axis, it will produce zero torque. And so only the weight and the normal force will produce a torque. And in fact, they will produce torques in opposite directions. As if we see, the weight force would want to rotate in the clockwise direction, whereas the normal force would try to rotate in the anti-clockwise direction. So we know that the torques produced by these two forces about this axis of rotation must be equal, as the ladder isn't rotating currently. So let's see what the torque of this uh, normal force is about the axis. 
So we always need to see the line where the force is acting and draw a perpendicular line to our point. And we need to find this distance. This is the arm of the force. And so, well, we can see that this is just the same as the height of the wall. And since we know the angle and we know the length of the wall is 4 meters, we can use 4 times sine 60. As the sine of 60 here is just opposite over hypotenuse, so wall over 4. And we can multiply over by 4 to get that the height is that. So the force here is the n wall times by 4 sine 60. As that is this horizontal, I mean this vertical distance. And then similarly we need to try and extend this weight force as well and also draw a, a distance that it acts as, so the arm of the force, that's going to be the small d over here. And so, so it starts over here and ends over here. And we need to find this distance and we know that this is here 2 meters and we know that there's 60 degrees, so here we need to use cosine. So it's going to be the force, which is weight, times 2 times cosine 60. And here cosine 60 is just this purple over 2. And we can multiply over by 2 to get this purple distance. And well, we know that the normal force is equal to the frictional force, as what we just said in part A. So if we replace the normal force with the frictional force, we'll get this. And then we can just, we know the weight is uh, 50 newtons. And so if we divide by F, we get that it's going to be 50 times 2 cosine 60 divided by 4 sine 60. This will give us 14.4 newtons. In this way, there will be also a rotational equilibrium. And then they tell us the coefficient of friction between the ladder and the ground is 0 0.4 determine whether the ladder will slip. So we know that the frictional force or like the so, so like the maximum frictional force we can have is uh, going to be the normal force times the coefficient of friction. Here in this case is the assuming the static friction as we want to see whether it will start slipping or not. And for that, we need to see whether the force that would be making a slip is larger than the this maximum frictional force. So if we calculate this, we know that this the, no, the weight is just 50 newtons. That is just like the normal force acting at this point. Or, or just like if we put the weight into that point, there's just going to be 50 newtons. So 50 times 0 0.4, that will give us 20 newtons. So this weight of the ladder supports a maximum uh, frictional force of 20 newtons, whereas our currently, currently needed frictional force to keep this in equilibrium is only 14.4 newtons. So the weight of the ladder um, provides a bigger than, like a larger force than needed to, to stop this from slipping. So since the current actual frictional force is smaller than the maximum we can have, it will not slip. If in part B we would have found some answer like 30 newtons, for example, that would mean we need a, a force of 30 newtons to keep this in equilibrium. But that wouldn't be possible anymore because this weight of the ladder cannot, cannot support, cannot supply that much frictional force anymore. And so that's how we can calculate it. And then question 11. We're told that the mass, the moment of inertia of a solid sphere is 2 or 5 mR squared. And we need to show that the total kinetic energy of the sphere when it rolls without slipping its speed V is this. So we know that when it rolls, we have a linear kinetic energy. So just by moving in a straight line with some speed V. And we have rotational kinetic energy. And so we need to sum these two. We know that linear is one half mv squared and we know rotation is one half i omega squared. And well, we know what i is and we also know a relationship for omega as we know that v is equal to omega times r. And so omega is going to be v over r. 
So this is a very important relationship that you have to remember as it comes up in many of these simplifications as we often want to uh, eliminate either omega or either v and this formula is very useful for doing that. So if we plug in everything, we know our moment of inertia is 2 over 5 m r squared and our speed is v squared over r squared. And then we see that these r's cancel out. So what we are left with is 1 half mv squared plus 1 over 5, as these 2's also cancel out, times mv squared. And well, if we add these up, we will get 7 over 10 mv squared. We just need to add these two fractions. So um, yeah, that's how we get that. And then we are told that a solid sphere of mass 1.5 kilograms is rolling without slipping on a horizontal surface with, a, with some linear speed. And then the sphere roll, then rolls down this ramp to reach a surface 45 centimeters lower. So we need to calculate the speed of the sphere at the bottom of the ramp. So again, as usually in every energy conservation question, we need to split this up into the different parts where we have conserved energy so we can see like this for example is the first situation we are observing and this is the second situation and we need to see what types of energies we have in both cases and we know that due to energy conservation these two energies must be equal so at the first point we only have well like kinetic and rotational and at the second point we also have kinetic and rotational but now we also have e potential. Oh, well, it depends where we put height equals zero. We can say that it had gained some kinetic energy or it had lost some potential energy. I mean, it had gained some potential energy or lost some potential energy, but we can say that here it had gained some potential energy as if we say that this is height equals zero, then this will be at height equals 45. So at the top, it would have zero potential energy, but at the bottom it will have some gain hit potential energy as it will be at a height of 45 centimeters and then we need to well we know that actually e kinetic plus e rotational will just be 7 over 10 mv squared so this is very useful for us that we have just derived in this previous equation so we know that initially we just have that much energy so we have 7 over 10 times the mass of 1.5, yes, times V 0 0.5 squared. So this is the total energy we have at the start. And then at the end, at the end we have still this much energy, but now we also have gained some potential. So we have MGH, so 1.5 times 9.81, times 0 0.45 as it dropped the distance of 0 0.45 meters so that will be 6.88 joules and well now we need to again uh, rearrange for this type of energy as we want to find the speed so at like afterwards we have calculated this energy is equal to 6.88 joules but we now know that this is only of the form of E kinetic and E rotational and we just want the speed if it has this much energy of kinetic and rotational so again we will just say that 7 over 10 mv squared is equal to 6.88 and so v is equal to 6.88 times 10 divided by 7 times 1.5 under the square root, this will give us a speed of 2.56 meters per second. So this is how you solve these two questions. I hope I was able to help and see you in the next video.